Belgrade is a striking friendly city. The population is 350,000 people. At a daily basis there are 125,000 cyclists passing through downtown Utrecht. So that's quite a lot. I'm really fond of, of cycling because it has so many advantages. It's about the noise, it's about clean air, about the climate, but also about how friendly it is in the city. So it, you really have the idea that uh, people are the boss on the street and not machines. It's all to get cars out of the city center, park at the edge of the city, or go into it and then pay the full price. But don't go through the city, that's the whole idea. Things that have changed radically in the last years, so you can see what happens if you choose the radical choice and get the car out and the bikes and the people in. This is called uh, Vredenburg. It's one of the central locations in our city. It's dedicated only to do bus traffic and bicycle traffic and of course pedestrians. So uh, regular cars are not permitted here. It's a very busy place because it's close to the central station and it's on the route to the city center. It's actually the busiest bicycle location of the Netherlands. Utrecht in a lot of ways is emblematic of, of an entire country that really made a, a very resolute decision in the 1970s to not build their cities around the automobile and, and 40 to 50 years later now they are really reaping the rewards of those decisions and so whether you go to any number of hundreds of cities across the Netherlands. Their city centers are reserved for uh, commerce, for community, for social connection. You've got markets, you've got shops, you've got social interaction, you've got lots of bicycles, lots of people on foot. In average, in Utrecht, 98% of households own one bike at least, and 50% owns three or more. For all the traffic to the city center, only about 12 or 15% is by car. So the big majority of people coming uh, come by bicycle first, but also public transport. When I went to school as a teenager, things were very different. And a lot of Dutch people have forgotten about it. I'm amazed by all that transformation, especially here in Utrecht. Things are changing rapidly and I, I just adore that. We're standing now on the Kruselaan, which is actually one of the first projects the city took up when they wanted to start changing the mobility system. So it used to be four lanes for cars, uh, right where I'm standing actually. And as you can see now, it has completely changed. It has got lots of space for pedestrians, it's got lots of space for cyclists, and there are no cars in this part of the street. On the map you can see the four lane road, and if you look at a modern map, there isn't even a road anymore. They don't want any through traffic here. Okay, we're still in the Kruselaan, and as you can see, there's now a really wide bicycle path. Many years ago, where the bicycle path is now, used to be parked cars and a car lane. So they completely transformed it. Just 10 years ago, this was a median of a four lane road, two lanes in that direction, two lanes in that direction. Five years later, the road was closed, only buses could go through, you had to go left or right, and now, today, the trees are here. This area right here in uh, Kruislan is all, all new. Uh, it was not like this when I came here two years ago. And uh, it's just an amazing improvement. So we are standing to the, uh, in the street that really is the entrance to the old city center from the central railway station for pedestrians. And it used to look like this, a parking lot with 75 cars parked here. And the city council wanted this to be a nice entrance to the city center. So the city council proposed to take away like 60, so 15 left. And then the merchants here said, no, we want them all gone. Because we're right off the pedestrianized zone where uh, sales are better. We are here on the Daphne Schippersbrug which is a, a very cool piece of infrastructure and it was a really big fight to get it here. So they had a problem with space because they had a school that needed to stay here and they also wanted to have the bike infrastructure. So what they ended up doing was putting it together. So the 
bike infrastructure and the bridge, they land on the roof of the school. The school board is working with the architects, is working with the engineers and the transportation planners to design a project that integrates so well into the community and so well into the urban fabric. And they redesigned the whole area so it's now for children to play and it's also infrastructure and the building in one. It wasn't until we started sharing renderings and photographs of this project that I think the world stood up and said, hold on, what are the Dutch doing? <laughs> I think that speaks to how normal, how ordinary, how unremarkable cycling has become here in the Netherlands is they've actually started integrating it into their buildings, the parking facilities at the train stations, now building cycle paths on those, the roofs of schools. I mean, these are all things that are, are pipe dreams in most other places in the world. This is a biking parking facility which can drive through on your bike. So this is the entrance on the north side and we have an entrance on the south side as well. And right now uh, we have place for about 8,000 bikes. It's going to be enlarged next August. Then there will be room for 12,500 bikes. It's one of the parkings in this area which add up to capacity of uh, 33,000 bicycles. And it's very important because it facilitates the combination between bicycling and using the train. I work in Amsterdam, so I go every day from Utrecht to Amsterdam. As soon as you park, you're right under the central station, so immediately you're in the train. So yeah, I think it takes me 10 to 15 minutes from here, and then I'm in the train. So it's very, it's very fast, very convenient. They have a number and a place, a row number and a place number, and a QR code you can use to find your bag if you want to. Before it was just putting your bike somewhere on the streets. Hopefully it was still there. And so it became easier and com more convenient to go to the train station, check in with your cart, you know, bike around, see if there's a spot. And if you go early, there is a lot of uh, spots where you can park. Yeah, well, you've seen the big biking parking facility at the Trental train station, but that's not all. In the downtown area, we have lots of uh, smaller parking facilities. This is the, the biggest one. It's really well used, especially for shopping. So in the weekends, uh, these kind of parkings are really uh, occupied. Right now, we're building two more, one for 1,000 places and one for 800 places. And that's still not enough. In the downtown area, we need five or 6,000 places extra. As a city, we provide also smaller uh, facilities uh, from, say, 15, 20 bikes to 100 bikes. We're trying to make more roads suitable for bicycles, so people have a choice. We are rebuilding streets, turning them into 30 km per hour streets, uh, closing them down one direction or both directions. Uh, so we make room for pedestrians and cyclists. So you have the sign of the bicycle streets is up there and it means that cars are guests on the street. So cyclists are equal to cars, so you don't overhaul, you just stay behind them until there's really clear that you can pass. So what you see there in the middle of the street is a rumble strip and it's used to naturally keep cars behind cyclists. Because if they will pass the rumble strip, the car will go like that, you have a little noise in the car and people don't like it and they stay behind the cyclist. The speed limit on this uh, will be 30 km an hour. Uh, sometimes you have fietsstraden which are 15 km an hour, but it's very low speed. The difference between car infrastructure and bike infrastructure is this is one of the main routes. And listen how quiet it is and you can hear people talking and you can hear the sounds of the bicycles and yet thousands of people are riding here every day. Here in the back you see the bicycle bridge. It's actually very old uh, but during the times that came by it was more and more dedicated for cyclists. So now it's car free, the car drivers have to ride around it and that is one of the major arguments for the success of cycling. Make it fast, make it convenient and make it of course more convenient and faster than for cars. We invest a lot in noise free or low noise measures. Uh, for example, these stones, cobblestones that are used, they are specially selected on the fact that they make not so much noise when you drive over them. We do also do that with the tarmac. The tarmac has to produce very low noise. 
We use red tarmac in uh, the Netherlands and the reason is it's a visual signal to car drivers that they are on an equal level with other traffic, mostly pedestrians and cyclists. Um, it's a special kind of tarmac, so it, it's got less friction, so you don't have to work so hard as a cyclist to get to go forward. I moved from Boston, Massachusetts to Utrecht in June of 2017 and everywhere that we want to go to on a bicycle, even if it's to Ikea, there is a safe route. Even to the box stores, we can go on bike infrastructure. It's just wonderful. This is another part of Utrecht uh, in the bicycle network where you can see that the city gives cyclists the upper hand to the cars in the system. And you can only cross here as a cyclist and pedestrian. And when you turn that way, there's also only a route for cyclists. So a car driver has to go around and if you're on your bike, you can go straight. So for a mental feeling, that's very important because on your bike you not only are faster, but you only feel faster. So where are we standing right now? It uh, used to be water since about the year 1000 to 1100, so almost 900 years ago. It has been water ever since, but for 40 years that it was a motorway. And soon that motorway will only be a footnote in history. So here it says end of the 1960s, so this is the original city moat or canal as you want to say it, with the original bridge and the original water. Then in 1969, they started making that road, drilling all these piles in there to support this road that they were building. Then they built a viaduct here. This is 1974, the viaduct is finished and it looks like a proper motorway. You could drive 100 kilometers per hour here. <laughs> it was total madness. 2020, the magic year, this is when it all should happen. And you can see how inclusive it should be. So, it is for everyone. you can put in 12 bikes for example so 12 people and everybody driving a car usually drives it by himself they take up a lot, a lot of space I hear a lot about the American cities and they will tell me we don't have space for bicycles when well, you see you can have a really good system I still have space for cyclists have space for pedestrians and have space for cars it gives our children the freedom to go to their sports to go to their friends all by their own I think internationally that's quite exceptional that from a young age on you can go about where you like and without the help of your parents. So it really has a lot of advantages, uh, especially in an urban circumstances. And that means uh, so much for the residents who are able to live, work and play in their city uh, without having their mobility and their livelihood and their happiness limited by cars.